Okay, so getting back to Instagram so far. So getting back to Instagram so far, I have two posts. <clears throat> I can add as many as I want, of course, on different topics, photos, video, etc. And you have a few actions that you can perform on your own photos, such as deleting them and so forth. So let's do it like this. You should be back on Instagram, and we'll go back to your to your account icon, the one with the little person, and that will show everything that you've posted. And again, you can either select to view it as a grid or line by line. But let's say that photo, that first photo, I no longer want it, or I want to change it somehow. So if you tap on your photo or your video, You're then going to have your your photo, and you should see probably three line, three little dots. If you're on uh, iPhone, it might be slightly different. It might be below it, but I see three dots on my photo. Um, Sorry, Victor, how did you get there? You go to your account mm -hmm. on the icon down there, and then you click on a photo. Okay. All right, just one moment. So then you're going to click on the on those three dots. You notice you've got a few options right there. Share it with other people, edit what you wrote, delete the photo, and then there's also copy share link, which I'll explain in a moment. All right, so let me confirm something here. Um, I'm going to go back to my video. I'm going to see what options my video has. Yeah, my, op my the options on my video are also share, edit, delete, and copy, share. If yours doesn't look the same, sometimes, unfortunately, there are differences between the apps. I see that all the time. I've, got, I've also got an iPad mini, so I can check things on both on both systems. I didn't bring it today, but uh, your app might be different than mine because mine's Android, but then it's all as similar as possible. In my case, I get share, which is to send it off to some of my other networks. I also have the ability to edit it, so I can go back and edit that uh, description, add more hashtags maybe. I have the ability to delete it and it'll confirm it. And then I've got also copy share URL. Yeah, this is useful because everything on Instagram, every photo and every video has a unique address, a unique web address. If I copy that, it copied that address to my clipboard. And if you don't have that share, we can get it out of a different spot. We'll see where. But that gave me a link to that photo on Instagram. Therefore, I can create an email and paste that link into the email and send people a link to that photo. What if I'm doing a monthly newsletter? I can take this photo, attach it to the monthly newsletter, and send it to them. Instead of the photo, it'll be a link to the photo. We can, depending on your device, we can get it from the app or we'll get it from the website. We will look at the website a little bit because it has some value, but usually we'll spend, some, we'll spend most of our time on the Instagram app. We'll get to the Instagram website in a moment. But that's what those dots are for. On your own photos, you can do a few actions on your own photos. You have the ability also for other people's photos. If I go back to search 
and I look at that photo right there, it's got the three dots as well. These are a little different. Let's take a look at that. Go look at someone else's photo. Go back to search and find someone else's photo, and let's look at what options we have in those, in those dots. In my case, I've got report. I've got report and copy share URL. Now mine's not changing here. It's going to come up in a moment. But I've got report and I've got copy share URL. If it's a photo that maybe is offensive or uh, you know racist or hate speech or violent or that sort of thing, you know, it's up to, to a large degree, up to the community to, to police, to help police itself. And so if you find weird things that maybe violate the terms of service, uh, you have that ability to, to report So anyway, you, you can look at a photo, and then you've got some options up there, and you've got report. So that, that's helpful if someone is posting crazy things against the rules of, the, of Instagram. You know, it's not really about that you don't agree with that. I would not be reporting people's content like that. It's that this, this shows nudity, or this is violence, and you know, those things that are against community standards um, that I would do a report. You also have the ability to copy that the address, the URL, to that post, which then I can share off on email or whatever. So those are the options for individual photos. Any questions on, on that so far? Let's shift gears a little bit to go look at the web version of Instagram. We're going to go off to the web in a moment, so again, any, any final questions for the moment on the Instagram app? We're still using Instagram, of course, but now let's see what does it look like over on the on the web. Can you repeat that? We didn't create the link. Yeah, we're going to see that right now. So um, let's go ahead and open your web browser. Go ahead and open any web browser. And let's go to Instagram.com. Uh, it might take a while for it to turn on, so the faster thing would just be jump to it or something. I didn't want to press the button down on the tower there. Again, that one's already on. If it's already on, I would just, I would just use it. So if you go to Instagram.com, uh, here it will say create an account, but this is very limiting. You won't be able to do very much. Uh, but it is useful because you can do a little bit of the management of your account here. Uh, you won't be able to share photos here. It's still going to need to be in the app, but you will be able to comment and like and so forth. And it might be easier to do that here on a real keyboard than on the keyboard of your device. So we created an account. I created a fake one, but I remembered my, my login. So I'm going to click login. If you don't have an account to log into, if this fake account that you created was just gibberish, you can't log into it, just hold on a moment. We're not going to do too much on the, on the website. I just want to show you. I'm going to click log in, and it is going to really guide you to go get the app because that's where you get that's where you do the most. I'm going to click log in. What's my username? It is Victor's Baker nine, and then my password.
So with the same information that I used to create the Instagram app account, I'm using that same login information to log into Instagram.com. I haven't added a profile photo, so it's going to keep nagging me about it. It's going to start to give me suggestions. Now that I've used Instagram a little bit, and it might be seeing that I'm searching for certain cooking keywords, and I'm liking certain pictures and stuff about certain baking accounts and such, it's going to start to suggest to me maybe some of these related accounts. I'm going to see that on the app as well, but here I'm seeing it in the, on the website. And what I see on the Instagram website is basically my home screen. My home screen is showing that photo on the app and logged into the website I'm seeing the same thing. So the, the website shows me my home screen just like my app. Well, what's the point of this? I can comment on these here. Um, I can click the like as well, just like clicking a like on the app. Or I can comment you know, with a real keyboard and comment something for real here. I'm going to see my own content as well. So my own video there. I have the three dots. The only thing I can do is embed or cancel. I can't edit my own stuff on Instagram.com. I can do it on the on the app, but I can't do very much with my even my own content on the website. So the value of this might be an easy way for me to comment, an easier way to comment and like. You know, this is what I could do. I, how I said, spend 10 minutes at a time, 15 minutes at a time on Instagram just using it. You could do it via the website. At the very, very, very top, I have search. If you scroll all the way to the top, you also have search up here. Let's say search for cupcakes. That'll also tell me hashtags. People are using cupcakes. Cupcake Instagram, Cupcake Shop. So if I do a search for cupcakes on the app, I should get the same results. Here's the top posts. It might be nicer to view them here, especially when they're videos. When tomorrow comes, I'll be on my own, feeling frightened of the things that I don't know. It depends on how you created the account or how you logged in. Uh, we'll have to look at it during the break for me to fully answer your particular question, but if you logged in with the same username or email on the app or the website, it should be the same. It shouldn't be different. One at a time, please. What's that? I didn't hear you. Sorry. Okay. Um, there is a spot where we can possibly edit that, but um, let me go on here and see if that answers your questions. Your question in a moment. <coughs> Uh, so I can do the search, I'll get the top results, the recent results, and I can do the same sort of thing that I see, something I can comment. If I hover over, I get how many, how many likes and how many comments and such. Okay, so what I can also do is I've got the Explore tab. They've got it different here on the website. It's more like a compass, I guess. But on the, on the, web, on the app, it's that little search it's the search icon here. I'm also seeing this discover. So discover people. 
these are all of these accounts that I might like depending on what on how I've used Instagram I might like these accounts the point of that is to give a follow or like and such the point of giving the, the follow is I might get a follow back I do have notifications here I'll be able to see oh I did get a notification I didn't notice it on my app but it's the same thing. I did get a notification. I got a reply from Anaïs, way over there in France. So I can view it here. Yes, it is. No, there is no Starbucks coffee where I live, unfortunately. So there we go. That's that's the that's the point of this. Again, I didn't plan this. Just some random person that I messaged on Instagram. I commented on her item, but I added it as a form of a question. I didn't just put a dead end, great job, or looks nice, or anything like that. I also f added a question to it. Some people will ignore that question. Some people will reply. Well, okay, great, the reply. What's the point of that? Anais might be interested at some point in following me, might be interested in buying my products. I can keep the ball rolling by continuing to reply. The problem, though, is I don't believe I can do it easily from here. I guess. I guess I could. It's not too obvious. I'm more used to the app. But on the website, you get the you get the notification, you see it there, you can click on the photo. That'll take you back to the photo, similar to the app. On the app, I'm going to tap the notification icon. The same comment shows up there. And I can tap there to go back to see the original photo. And then on that photo, again, I can keep up the conversation. I can reply again which might get me that follow, which might get me a reply or a like. That's the point of all of this. The social in social media. But if I go back to the photo, I can then further add more comments, follow, etc. If you posted something, I'll throw it and delete it. Can we do that? Yes. Alright, everyone, please remember to mute your devices again. Now, what I can do on Instagram.com. If I um, scroll to the top and I see the icon, uh, the account icon up there, I can click on that. That'll be like looking at my profile on the app as well. Why did you do that? I'm going to look for whenever you do it. Yeah, me too. And then I didn't know what it One at a time, please. One at a time. Yes? I was just wondering how you, how you got to that page and having trouble navigating your website. Well, they kind of hide it. Make sure you scroll all the way to the top. You should see a bar all the way to the top, and then you should see the three icons on the top right. Okay. And then you can click on the little person, okay. and that's your, that's your account there. Mm -hmm. Question there? Yes, you can change your username when you go to Edit Profile. We saw that previously. If you go to Edit Profile on the app or the device, on the app or the website, but that's what I'm trying to get to. So uh, we have the ability here under the, the account. If you're on the website here and you want to log out, they really have it hidden. If you want to log out of the website on the .com, you have to go to the account, you have to go to the three dots right there, those three dots, and then you've got logout. It's really hidden. Don't log out, don't log, don't log out yet because what we want to do is we want to click that edit profile. This will give you a screen where you can change the name of the 
of the account, you can change your email, your username. So there's your username, just like I can go to the settings of my app right there, change username. Put in a phone number, gender, biography, website. This extra option here about showing accounts that they recommend to me. On the left side, you've got change password manage apps if you have any connected badges. This is something that you only get out of the website. Badges. I want to get an icon to add to my website so that people can follow me on Instagram. So I let's say I want this icon of view on Instagram or maybe this little icon or that one. So when I choose an icon It'll then say, copy this code, paste it to your site. I can't show you how to do that here. You have to log on to your website and copy and paste this code. But here is where you get the badge, kind of like when we talked about LinkedIn last time. Remember there was a screen to get a badge, and it says, copy this code onto your site. So it can show you as far as, here's the code, you need to figure out how to add it to your site. <coughs> that code there, I need to copy and paste it into my site and it'll give me that icon onto my site. And the email preferences. If I added an email when I created the account, it's going to send me emails once in a while. It's going to send me emails about what's new on Instagram, reminders to log in once in a while, what's new and all of that, products, and maybe it'll ask you to provide some, some you know, feedback once in a while. There's the logout button also. So it might be somewhere in the app, hidden somewhere, but I know one other place where you can delete the account. Let me take a moment to show you where you can delete the account if you'd like to. Um, and it's not obvious at all, because they don't want you to leave. But, but here on the website, Instagram.com, in the account icon, Edit Profile. On the very first screen of Edit Profile, on the bottom right corner, very nondescript, temporarily disable my account. Okay, so it's using language that it doesn't exactly mean close my account, delete my account. It's using language of temporarily disable my account, but that is to delete your account. That is to start the process to delete your account because this and many networks nowadays they let you delete the account and then it's still kind of there for like 30 days just in case you want to come back just in case you're like actually I still want to use Instagram maybe I do want to uh, you know get uh, sales from it or whatever so oftentimes if there's no obvious delete my account there will be some form of word or verbiage like disable my account or temporarily, temporarily remove my account something like that and you don't have to click on it but this will be a process where it'll then say, you can disable your account instead of deleting it. This means your account will be hidden until you reactivate it by logging in. You can only disable your account once a week. So you, you go in here and you're saying, you know, why are you turning it off? And you go through the process and then it'll delete the account. So that's hidden in there inside of the, the edit profile. It's probably in the app somewhere, too. I didn't see it right away, so it's probably in there, but if not, it's in the website.
Now the big thing that's missing on Instagram.com is sharing anything. You can't do that aspect. I can comment on people's stuff, and I can follow, and I can search, but I cannot share on the website. I still have to do it on the app. And so that might be a big that might be a big uh, that might be a deal breaker. Well, what am I gonna do on the website if I can't share anything? You can do the commenting and that and that social aspect of the social network, but you can't do any of the sharing. Okay, so we've looked at uh, various ways of using the app, the website. We'll look at a couple more things for Instagram. Any any questions? General questions so far? Yes. We can temporarily disable our accounts. It will leave the old that say email address and create a new account another time. After the time limit, because if you disable it now and don't let it automatically auto delete, and you try to use that same email again it'll say you've already got an account just reactivate your account okay. Thank you. So let me just check something very quickly and then I'll show you this just one moment Okay, so uh, we can use the app, and we're going to use it like 99% of the time, the app. Sometimes you're going to be using the website. Let me show you also another website that is useful because people have built like a cottage industry on making like ancillary Instagram websites, websites that will help you do more things or different things on Instagram, and not really be able to post but be able to use Instagram in different ways, such as you know making f followers and organizing them into lists and getting stats and all of that. So let's do this. Go on your on your web browser. Let's go to the website iconosquare.com. I c o n o s q u a r e iconosquare.com. Visit iconosquare.com. Key metrics about your Instagram account. Get your total number of likes received, your most liked photos, your average number of likes and comments, your follower growth, and much more analytics. What this site is about is if you choose to connect your Instagram account here for free, it will analyze your account. It'll scan your photos, it'll tell you how many likes you've got, it'll tell you your most popular photo, it'll tell you your most popular followers, and the number one filter that you use, so stats, insights, analytics. Uh, on any of these social networks, it's valuable to know some of these stats. It's valuable to know who your most popular followers are or where they're from. So right here, maybe I'm getting a lot of followers from Russia or Sweden or France or Italy, you know, so that I can create content to reach that target audience. I can use Iconosquare to view my photos, like them, comment, search. I can save photos easier. 
um, if I see someone's photo on Instagram, I don't have a very easy way to save their photo if I want to take it for some reason. But I can do so on Iconosquare. I can create photos, and uh, I mean albums for my photos. So I can organize photos or people's accounts so that I can put these followers into this folder because all of these followers are on a certain topic. I can follow and unfollow people easier. So I'm just going to go on to say what's so great about it. There's a free version and there's a paid version. Uh, the paid versions give you more uh, ability, of course, but the, the free version is still very useful. You can do photo contests here. We're not going to get to that concept. Not everyone needs it, but you can research it if you if you go here. What's this all about? You can do contests to engage people to follow you, to like your posts, and all of this social media is, of course, then trying to get you more followers and customers and such. They divide this into communities. So you can reach people on a specific community. So just another way to be more active on and, and powerful on Instagram. Um, the most powerful features of Iconosquare are not free, but the basic ones are very useful. So this just basically tells you why, why this is so great. If you'd like to use it, Are you sure you're on the right website? If you're not yeah. on iconosquare.com, it won't be the correct site. We're going to sign in. Uh, it doesn't matter if you didn't see it because that's just an advertisement. You will see how it is and how to use it after we sign in. Uh, I haven't signed in yet. I'm still saying a few other things. Yes. Honey, I just signed in and it will automatically follow, follow itself. Yes, one, one thing to be careful there. <clears throat> it wants you to follow them as soon as you sign up, which you can unfollow later, but it does that. So you, you'll get the most results out of signing in. I'll do that in a moment, but if you if you're interested, it is a valuable service, Icona Square. I'm going to click sign in with Instagram at the top right. Because I'm already signed in, it recognizes I'm signed in. It's just saying, would you like Icona Square to be authorized to access these various aspects of your site? Again, if you're not comfortable with this, you don't have to do any of this. But there's many websites out there now that will attach themselves to your Twitter, to your Instagram, to your Pinterest, whatever, and it will give you more features. The catch, of course, is that you are giving these sites access. This is telling you. You're about to give Iconosquare the ability to access basic information, such as the list of your connections, all of your photos and profile info, the photos that you've, that you've liked, the comments that you've made, the followers that you have. That sounds like a lot of info. Again, you have to decide if this is useful or not. Uh, you can always disconnect this. It's telling you that down there you can revoke access. When you log into your Instagram, remember there was a screen that said apps. What apps are connected to your Instagram? And you can go here and turn off Iconosquare. No more access. So you have the ability to unlink it. I'm using this test account, so I will proceed, but then you have to figure that out. You have to decide if you're going to do this for, for real or not. Authorize. You give me the screen. I want a time zone. If I wanted to send me email about updates and so forth, I need to add an email. Confirm I'm not a robot. And 
do have to add an email. Oh, here it is at the bottom. Follow Iconosquare on Instagram. That's on by default. If you leave that on, it'll automatically, you will follow Iconosquare on Instagram. And it's on by default. If you don't want to follow them, you can unfollow later, or you can turn that off. <coughs> save that and step in and then it should give me the home screen to better serve you please tell us if you're using Iconosquare for personal or for professional if you choose professional it'll probably suggest to you to get the paid version um, and probably somewhere in the terms of service it probably says if you use Iconosquare for professional purposes and don't select professional purposes we have the right to cancel your account. Probably. So I'm going to take my chances and I'm going to say this is personal. Validate. <clears throat> but again, if I'm using it for business, I should select the business one, the professional one. And it'll probably suggest to you to get the paid one, but you can ignore it. And then on this, you can explore this on your own. I'm not, I'm not trying to promote this one company. I don't work for them. I don't get any sort of kickback. But I recommend this one because I like the features that it has. And I've seen it evolve over the years, and it's getting more powerful. And with that power comes, you'll be able to pay for various features, such as remove the ads. But just a quick browse, I can look at the feed. What are the latest posts? I can look at my photos. Everything that I've liked will show up here. My followers show up. Who I am following shows up here. Popular accounts. This will show me who's popular that I might want to follow, connect with. Do you have to do this for every single Instagram account that you manage? Yes. You would need to create the Iconosquare account for each one you manage. At the top then, this is the viewer. The point of this is to be able to see the content that everyone's sharing and then being able to easily comment and reply and all of that. That's the viewer. If I go to analytics, here is where it will process my account. It'll scan. Um, this will scan your account. And if it's a brand new account, there's not much to show you. But once you've got it set up for a while, it'll tell you your most active followers, your, who's liking you the most, where countries are people liking you from, and all of that. And so that's how you can decide if it's working. That's an analytics. That's statistics. Insights. Many names for the same thing. Knowledge, basically. And knowledge is power in social media. As a social media marketer myself, all of this stuff is valuable because I need to know this hashtag worked, that hashtag didn't. Snapshots are just stats about your own account. get all of this info like right here. What's the most popular filter that I used? What are the most popular photos that I share? Such. So just different stats for your content. You can manage your own content here. My own photos, how many comments and everything. I can do promotions. Share this over on Facebook, widgets, and all of this stuff. So you can explore this on your own. But basically, I might not have made, I don't think I've said it yet, but the username that you create on Instagram is, is also your Instagram address. Uh, so what I mean there is I, I have, for example, uh, Instagram.com slash PMD Interactive. 
for our company, we have an Instagram account. Uh, and any Instagram account's username is also the web address. This is what I was saying earlier about you can get the address for your content. Um, it's in the app, but there's still this basic web infrastructure, and your username is your Instagram address. So there's only, you know, as I've said, there's, there's so many hours in, in the day, there's so many networks and such, there's not a lot of content here, really. But if you would like, you might find it useful to, to move your mouse and click that button right there, if you think it'll be useful. And uh, Iconosquare has something similar, iconosquare.com slash the address of your account. The point of that is that you can do a little bit of a little bit more branding. You can do like a profile cover photo. You can you can make your Iconosquare account look a little nicer, more visually interesting than the Instagram. The Instagram is just going to show a bunch of photos, perhaps, but the Iconosquare version is going to show you know thumbnails and a bunch of stuff. And again, this free version gives you some good good amount of content. It will look good for the paid for the paid features and it gives you more 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 features. Sometimes you see on, on, on Facebook a Facebook fan page has like a really cool looking Instagram feed. How do you do that? Well here it is. On Iconosquare here's one way to do it. It's called a tab, a Facebook tab. You can go through this process and create a Facebook tab. And when someone visits you on Facebook, your Instagram photos will look nice, will look nicer over on, uh, on Facebook. So the example from these guys on their Facebook is, is right here. You see the timeline, the about photos, and now you've got Instagram feed. That's a brand new tab on Instagram. People ask, how do you do this on Insta on Facebook? How do you do this? Do that? How do I add a map? How do I add subscribe? Those are tabs. Some company or Facebook itself provides some sort of tab to add more features to Facebook. So Iconosquare provides a tab for you to add to your Facebook to really show off your Instagram photos. By default, it doesn't have that, perhaps. By default, it doesn't have a map on Facebook, but a particular app or a particular company might have a tab for you to use. Possibly free, possibly not. You have that contest, launch your contest in just minutes. So again, this is much more than we have time to get into, but you can create contests for your for your business, get more activity, more followers, and that sort of thing, although now it takes the effort of putting the rules and all of that, and notice plans and pricing. Iconosquare will help you manage this, but what do we have here? As an intermediate user, you can set all of this up for $500 a year, or pay it monthly $69 a month. I personally have not used this. I don't know how good it is. I don't know if price tells you how good it is, but obviously anyone can put any price for anything. I don't know if it's worth it that much. And then I've also got search on top. So that's Iconosquare. That's an extra non-affiliated, it's not affiliated with Instagram, it's a third-party app, I mean website. Uh, Instagram neither, you know, approves or endorses them, but Instagram lets people make apps on top of Instagram. Just like Twitter lets people make apps on top of Twitter. Um, this is just one of many of them. And it has, it has some usage, so I, I recommend it. I'm going to end the main lecture in a little bit and have a have some lab time. We've covered a lot about Instagram, and there's still a couple things here and there, perhaps. But 
it's up to you to kind of try it and explore it. And what does that button do? I don't know. I'll click it. What happens if I do this and that? I'll click it. And again, what to do, how to share, what to share and such, that's what I can't teach. It really depends on what you need to do on, on, on online. Yes? On their little carousel at the beginning, they had something that said to show what the popular hashtags are. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find that too. I wasn't. I wasn't seeing it. Um, yeah. There should be a screen of popular somewhere. So that's a way also to see what is popular to maybe help me figure out. I should be posting some of this. I think it's up here on popular maybe. Popular somewhere. Where did you see yours? It, it was on the carousel before we did the first sign-up. Yeah, I've seen it before, and, I, and they might have moved it. So somewhere there's a screen about popular hashtags. We'll have to poke around a little bit, but there should be a screen that might give you top hashtags. That's just a different way of seeing that when you're on the app and I'm starting to type cookie, It'll say this is more popular than that one. Although this one does give you the raw number saying like love is the most popular one, which it is. It's got like, like 500 million posts of love. So, Icona Square, check it out. Instagram app, check it out. 400 million users, worth at least a billion dollars. <throat> Very popular, getting more and more every day. It's so much integrated with Facebook and <clears throat> you will be able to also do promoted posts on promoted posts on uh, Instagram. Uh, if you research that, you will be able to make your post show up for more people promoted by a paying, which maybe you want to get a, a good handle on the free stuff before you go to the paid stuff. Any general questions then on, on uh, Instagram? All right, we'll have some lab time until 12.15, and uh, we'll do it again next week. Next week will be YouTube. I've got a YouTube video to work with. You don't have to come with a video. I'm going to give you a YouTube video. I mean, I'm going to give you a raw video to work with, and we're going to learn how to do a little bit of video editing. We have some video editing software in this class for free. Uh, and then we're going to edit the video, put some music, do cool stuff with a video, because we need a video for YouTube. We can't share anything besides video. We're going to spend one day next time on making a video. Then in two weeks, we're going to make the, the YouTube account, upload it, optimize it, and all the stuff that you need to know on the YouTube website. But before we get to that, we need a video. That'll be next week.